What up, what up? It's your girl P Hope, where the P stands for prison website or plenty of fish. Everybody needs love, so let's talk about it. Hey y'all, welcome back to my channel. Today's episode is season three, episode one of Love After Lockup. And when I tell y'all this is my motherfucking show, this is my show. I don't be playing about this show. I've already watched season one and season two, and now we have season three, which we have six new couples. And it looks like these folks are about to really give us what we're looking for. Okay? Um, the six couples are, let me see, I got my notes. We have Scott and Lindsay, Jessica and Maurice, Sean and Dustin, Tyrese and Shonda, John and Christiana, and Chevelle and Quaylen. All right, those are our six couples. Now, we jump right in and they introduce us to Scott. First, y'all, let me set this pillow up here because your girl has already cleansed herself for the evening. And, um, so I done went on put my little pajamas on. So I'm not trying to get y'all bedtime titties. I'm just trying to, you know what I'm saying, get the little video done and go to bed. So, that's what we gonna do. Now, back to Scott. Scott is chilling at his house and he opens the door and it's an older black lady there. And she is an interior decorator. Scott has called her over. The lady's trying to figure out you know what services that Scott is looking for and he says that he wants to spruce up his house for um, for his girlfriend um, she'll be coming there and she has already picked out several little um, ideas of how she would like for the house to look when she gets home so the interior decorator is like okay all right so um, where is she coming home from and he gives this little nervous laugh and he lets her know that she is coming home from prison and she's like oh well um you know how old is she lindsay is 27 so then the interior decorator instantly puts in her mind that scott is a sugar daddy and lindsay is a sugar baby okay um you know that's to be seen at this point we don't know it's speculation but scott says that all the other 50 year old men out can just you know eat their fucking hearts out because he got lindsay in the bag child so yeah he says that for the last 10 years he has been dating off and on just on an as need basis um so pretty much you know when Pornhub is not cutting it for scott He'll call a little sugar dip up and handle his business and move on because he is not trying to settle down with a train wreck. Now, I said to myself, like, okay, you don't want a train wreck, but then you met Lindsay on the prison website. So, I'm assuming that you'll just settle for a unstable ass roller coaster, maybe. Because, Scott, if you don't think... That Lindsay about to take your motherfucking ass on a ride. Boy, you got life fucked up. Boy, you got life fucked up. <sighs> so anyway, the camera pans over to Lindsay. Lindsay is talking to us from the prison phone. And she immediately lets us know that, um, you know, Scott was completely different than all the other men that she normally talks to on the site because majority of the time the men just want sorry um the men just want her to um you know send sexy pictures and talk dirty to them um on the site but scott had a completely different approach he genuinely wanted to get to know her so she felt like um scott deserved a real chance she said that <clears throat> since they have been dating that he has definitely sent her a few thousand dollars and that he also takes care of her mom and daughter when need be i was a little taken aback 
by that because it showed a picture of Scott and the daughter. Well, I, I want to say he had his arm around her daughter. And the daughter looks like she might be between anywhere between 8 and 10. I don't remember how old the daughter was. But either way, who who is the guardian of this daughter, of the child right now, that approved this meetup? Like, I just don't see myself letting anybody, a stranger, meet my child. Like, your child met Scott before you met Scott. That's not cute child you know i know if i would have told my mama or my grandmama to go meet up with some dude get the, some money from him to take care of the bills and let my child take a picture with this man let me tell you what they would have asked me if i've been snorting the prison paint off the walls because that is most definitely some this is your brain on drugs type of shit like for real for real so we're not gonna do that because it's it's just too much going on out here so I think that was about it for the story with um, Scott and Lindsay because in essence, Lindsay says that, you know, she is definitely in love with Scott and she hopes to um, end up with a big ring, a big house and a fairy tale life forever with Scott. So yeah, y'all, that was Scott and Lindsay. Next, we have jessica we meet jessica jessica is at her parents house and she is showing little pictures of you know when she was a child and um just kind of walking through to get to the backyard where her parents are and she describes them as the all-american family she's talking to her parents about um wanting them to meet her boo and her boo's name is Marcus. Her and Marcus met on POF, which is Plenty of Fish. Okay. Um, she says that it was definitely love at first sight for her. He was tall. He was dark. He was fine. And she just kept flipping them pictures. And she quickly realized that this motherfucker was locked up. All right. So... <laughs> But she did not let that detour her because fast forwarding, her and Maurice have been together for four and a half years. And, you know, and they're happy with each other. Maurice is incarcerated for a first degree burglary. And um, I believe that he is set to come home soon. Um, but her dad wants to let all of America know that him and his family do not approve of this relationship and they said that Maurice is definitely going to have to prove himself now um Jessica and her family are all Caucasian Maurice is black so Maurice already has one strike against him by being a black man and then you got two strikes against you because you're a black man with a record which means that baby when we invite you to the cookout one of us got to keep our eye on you at all times until you prove that you can be trusted you know because first degree burglary is not something to be taken lightly no, regardless of what the situation was so yeah and jessica also lets us know that her and her sister who have you know grown up together and always been extremely close and have that tight bond that they have not talked in damn near five years because of the relationship that she has with maurice um at some point her and maurice got married um, but even before that, the sister decided that she wanted to end the relationship with Jessica because she said that she doesn't want anybody like Maurice around her niece. And um, so, you know, Jessica needs to rethink her situation. But as you know, as of right now, there's nothing to rethink because Jessica and Maurice are married. Jessica is um looking for the hopes of them having a real wedding because they got married in jail and their rings cost um a total of two dollars okay 
So she's hoping to have the real thing once Maurice gets out and proves himself to the family because daddy says that is definitely something that has to be earned. He's not just going to be, you know, gun ho about giving them a real wedding. Like, so hang it up, Jessica. Then we meet John. Now, <laughs> the first thing John wants us to know is that he is half Native American. And I'm assuming, I don't want to get it wrong, but I'm, I'm guessing that his other half is just Caucasian. Um, he did say what it was, but I don't remember. But the, the part that you need to know is that, you know, he is half Native American and that's the side that he embraces the most is his Native American side. Now, unlike most of these cast members, um, John has also had a record in his past. Uh, John did a sum of 12 years in prison for fraud. I'm guessing it was bank fraud because he said that what he used to do was change the last two digits on the banking account and he was still able to, you know, withdraw large lump sums of money. And at some point, he got busted for the shit. So, yeah, he did a sum of 12 years in prison. Now, before this incarceration and um, after his release, he has been able to produce eight children. John has eight kids. Um, they range from teenagers down to babies. Okay? So, John is a busy man. He's a very busy man. And so they show him in the kitchen and it's looking like he's getting ready to, excuse me, boil some potatoes or some shit like that. I don't really know what the hell John in the kitchen doing, but then his phone rings. And so his phone rings and he has a collect call from none other than his baby girl, Christiana. Okay. Uh, Christiana. <laughs> Christiana is on the phone and the first thing that she wants John to know is that she has had two cups of coffee and she cannot stop walking around the cage. Now, me personally, I've never been locked up. So, you know, I'm not judging, but I'm hoping and I am praying to God that cage is another word for cell. She couldn't stop walking around the cell. But after she said it, John said it too. He was like, yeah, you know, your cage is so small. You know, how many times you gonna walk around the bitch? And I said, well, cage, if she's in a damn cage, what the hell kind of basket case have you got yourself involved with, John? Like, so I'm nervous and I'm scared for John. But... You know, John doesn't give a shit about that because John says that, you know, he's already been engaged twice. He's been married four times. And, you know, the relationships with those ladies were just surface level. But he has been dating um, Christiana for three months now, um, a whole 90 days, and he's madly in love with her, you know. So she is like no other. John calls his brother over. Um, his brother's name is Cordell. So he calls Cordell over to help him make a surprise for Christiana. And Cordell is very confused, much like me. So me and Cordell is looking at him crazy like, bro, what do you know, what kind of surprise you got going? And he says, he reveals to us that he wants to do a... He wants to turn his truck into a chapel slash honeymoon suite as soon as Christiana runs out of the prison doors. So that he is able to get married and consummate the marriage all at the same time as soon as she is released. Now, me or Cordell, you know... We're both just kind of looking off into the wind at this point because who does shit like this, first of all? And second of all, you've only known her for 90 days. And third of all, you want to jump into your fifth marriage 
with a bitch that you really don't even know that that's coming out of a fucking cage okay that's what you want to do john like are you sure that that's what you want to do but either way he asked um cordell asked john like so bruh what if she says no and he was like, you know, I don't know what I'm going to do if she says no. But I just know I have to get this, you know, I got to get this done. Um, and he's already mapped out the time from the prison to the halfway house. And he's really trying to make this happen. So I'm guessing um, at least on the next episode, we'll figure out if she says yes or no. But y'all, I got a hunch that Christiana ass might just say yes. Because I told y'all, first of all, she sounds like a loony being. And second of all, when he was like, you know, baby, I miss you. I can't wait for you to come home. The first thing that fly this mouth is, uh, her mouth was like, yeah, you know, I can't wait to come home. I can't wait to suck your dick. Say what? John was a little ashamed and a little turned on all at the same time because he turned around and looked at the camera real quick like, okay, you know, baby, hold that down. Hold it. You know what I'm saying? We're we going to talk about that later. We'll talk about that a little later. Uh, so <laughs> it took him, it, it tickled him a little bit. But it's all good. It's all good. Then we go to Chevelle. Chevelle is at home and she's having dinner with her family. It's about five or six of them at the table. Could have been more. I'm not sure. But um, yeah, so she just jumps right in and she asks her family, how do they feel? about her boo Quaylen um getting ready to come home now eh, it was crickets at the damn table y'all absolute crickets at the table and so <laughs> so Chevelle was like don't everybody speak at once and then the next thing that you heard was hey my name Quaylon I'm 20, 29 years old and I'm angry. I'm angry because I didn't get to go to prom. I ain't get to graduate from high school. And you know what I'm saying? I, I, I just missed out on all my dreams and aberrations. Y'all, right then and there, right then and there was when my head started hurting. And I got this tingle in my spirit and I knew that season three was going to give me everything that I was looking for. Because first of all, y'all can't agree on this nigga name. Is his name Quaylen or Quaylon? Now, I think at one point it showed his mother talking about him or speaking on him and she called him Quaylen. So... I'm going to lean more so, so towards his name is Quaylen because I'm pretty sure his mother knows what she named him. But at some stage in life and in, in, in his incarceration, he named himself Quaylon. So since we're on two different playing fields with this name, we're just going to call this nigga Quavo. Okay. Um, until, until everybody comes to an agreement, his name is Quavo. All right. Um, now, he said he had dreams and aberrations, y'all. I haven't looked it up. So, aberration could definitely be a real word. It's just not in my repertoire. Um, it's, it's not a word I've, that has ever graced my ears. So, it's real foreign to me. But I can almost bet on my children that Quavo was not trying to say dreams and aberrations. He was trying to say dreams and aspirations. I can almost put that on my kids. But players fuck up too. And you know what I'm saying? I understand that, you know, you already let us know you did not have a chance to graduate. So I'm not holding it against you and I'm not judging you, Quavo. But... You know, if you're not 100% sure on the word, let's just leave it in your pocket. Just leave the word in your pocket. Um, Chevelle's mom is very skeptical of Quavo and the relationship because of the simple fact that she does not want Chevelle to end up taking another serious blow. 
a couple of years back, Chevelle had dreams and aberrations of being a rapper. And so she had come upon a situation to where she gave a producer $15,000. And in return, she got their ass to kiss. Okay. Um, so with these $15,000, there was nothing in return. And so it was a really big blow to Chevelle. It was a really big blow to the family. And so um, her mom pretty much just wants her to know, like, look, you can't just jump into this shit head first. First of all, because Chevelle has a five-year-old daughter that you need to think about her first. And second of all, you've already been down this road of, you know, losing thousands of dollars at one time that, you know, nine times out of ten, she don't have to blow like that. You know what I'm saying? I didn't see the cameras pulling up to no mansions or nothing like that. So, I don't think that Chevelle has it to where she could just afford to take big blows like that. And um, so, her thing is, she's letting Chevelle know that. When these men are locked up, they know how to finesse you. They know what to say to make you feel a certain way and to do what they need you to do. So before you just dive in head first, I need you to watch this man's actions and see if he's really going to prove that he's the man that he's been saying that this whole time that he's been locked up. And so Chevelle is listening to hear but i don't know if she's listening to understand but i guess we'll find out um but chevelle did let us know that you know so far she has given quavo about five thousand dollars i don't know how to feel about it y'all but again i don't know her pockets i don't know what she got going on maybe she has five thousand dollars to be able to you know give to Quavo and still take care of her daughter um now <laughs> now her and Quavo said that they have never had sex and Chevelle said that she had never even had phone sex until she started dating Quavo and it was weird for her at first but of course now she's gotten adjusted to it but she is definitely ready to get the real thing. Chevelle is ready for that ping. You know what I'm saying? She's been a down chick the whole time. And so now he's ready to come out. So she wants the real thing. You know what I'm saying? She wants that hammer. Uh, Quavo says that he has also imagined what their first time will be like. He says he thinks it's going to be magical. He can imagine soft lights, slow music, Chevelle, you know what I'm saying, laid across the bed in her lingerie. And he said he's going to step into the room like a fine-ass motherfucking gladiator. You know what I'm saying? And just put it in her life. You know what I'm saying? Just just, just put it down. Um, He, <laughs> he said, you know. <laughs> Quavo said he going to find him some muscles from somewhere and... He is going to break Chevelle in. Y'all ain't understanding what the fuck Quavo talking about. But I'm with you, Quavo. Get it, honey. Tell her ass up. Um, now, he's getting ready to sign his release papers to come home. And he wants to know if Chevelle can, you know what I'm saying, just stop and pick his mama up so that she can be there for his release as well. Now, this makes Chevelle very nervous and slightly irritated because her thing is i have to ride in the car with this lady this whole ride to come and get you first of all this is going to be awkward because we don't have that type of relationship with each other but then secondly how am i gonna get that ping if your mama is attached to your hip so she doesn't really know how this is going to work out but she does agree to it she told him that you know yes the, the mama can come along or whatever so we'll see how this goes then last but not least y'all we get sean sean is a mechanic who has had an on and off relationship with the mother of his children for the past 22 years now he lets us know that they have 
six children together but he's just never been in love with her so you know pretty much she's just always that go-to girl and she got that snatch you know what i'm saying she know how to throw that thing back and he certainly knows how to catch it um so him and his co-workers are working on a car and his phone rings so he answers the phone and he immediately gets cussed out y'all somebody is on the other line and it is destiny it's none other than destiny destiny says i done called your motherfucking ass five times why the fuck you ain't answering the phone and so you know he damn near about to drop the goddamn phone out his hand because he like look baby i i didn't know i never heard it ring but you know what's up and so she said, well, you know, I was blowing your ass up to let you know that I'm getting ready to come home a little sooner than expected. But I need you to go down to the bail bondsman and sign some paperwork. And he's like, OK, OK, I, OK, I can definitely go sign some paperwork. But is this going to cost me any money? And Destiny was pretty much like, well, hell yeah, nigga, it's going to cost money. It's going to cost about $5,000, but, you know, just consider that a down payment on the relationship. And I said, what, bitch? And she said, consider that shit a down payment on the relationship. And then Sean Raggedy Ass said, well, okay. So, y'all, they've been dating for about nine months, and that's what he decided to do. So he took his ass down to the bail bondsman. The bail bondsman is asking him, um, you know, questions that he needs to know. Like, how did y'all meet? How long have you known her? Are you sure you know what you're getting yourself into? Um, he gives uh, Sean the rap sheet. And Destiny is definitely flight risk. So I'm assuming that that's why he's having to go through this process in the first place. Instead of her just being immediately released. And he lets uh, Sean know that, look, if this hoe don't show up to her court dates and any other thing else we need her to show up to, your punk ass is going to be on the line for $50,000. So he gets to looking crazy, but in the end, he ends up signing the paperwork because he said that he trusts that Destiny is going to do the right thing and that, you know, pretty much... Destiny would not fuck him over because he has been doing for her for quite some time now. And in the nine months that they've been dating, he has spent about $35,000 on that ass that he hasn't even tapped yet. Okay. Um, so then it goes back to his job and one of the coworkers is looking at some pictures of Destiny and they like, all right, you know what I'm saying? I see you got you a little fine ass honey dip. I probably need to be jumping up on me some goddamn prison hoes and he was like well yeah but you know these pictures are somewhat old because i've never seen destiny via facetime and i have not been allowed to come see her at the jail so she did let me know that these are old pictures and she does not want me to see any current pictures of her because she has gained a little weight so then his other co-worker immediately says, well, you know, nigga, do you feel like you're getting catfished? And he said, well, no, I don't think I'm being catfished. I hope I'm not being catfished. So he said he definitely feels like that those are pictures of Destiny. But his concern is that she will not look anything like the pictures that she has been sending. Um, they did not show us any type of um what destiny got going on so we have not met destiny yet so hopefully we'll see her in episode two and that first oh that last couple which was what was their name tyrese and shonda tyrese and shonda we did not meet them in episode one so hopefully we'll meet them in episode two thank you guys so so much for tuning in um, I'm sorry if this review was all over the place or if me looking at my notes or not having eye contact threw you guys off But this is my very very first time doing a review So just bear with me and I promise y'all that each video will get better and better and better because 
you already know your girl drops content each and every week regardless of what it is so you might as well go ahead and hit that subscribe button if i missed anything for episode one drop down in the comment section below and let me know and other than that you already know be help be healthy be happy be safe it's your girl p hope and i am going to bed Hi.